Please make it make sense. And Lord, Peter then interviewed with Carlos King. Shout out to Carlos for getting the interview. But I low key, Peter was doing too much talking. <laughs> like the video as the intro plays, because y'all, I was, my mouth was open. This was full Patricia the entire time from beginning to end. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I want to make it make one. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Candy hair used to look like this. No, stop. I fly above. I, I, I fly above. I, I fly. No, that what you. No, I fly above. I, <laughs> Y'all. This interview, let me tell you, I can tell you what happened before we even start. I'm going to tell you what happened. Carlos booked him for a Carlos King interview, but Patricia thought it was a cocktails with Queens, and that's what the issue was. That was the problem. He didn't know what to expect. He thought he was getting cocktails with Queen when he was getting a Carlos King interview. That's the problem. He went all the way back to RHOA mode crazy to call somebody's husband a bitch but we are talking about peter i want to first start off by saying my sincerest apologies to lanithia monique leaks co or whatever her name is now y'all i'm sorry to nini for season i guess it was season six and we about to find out because Peter then all the way went in, and let me let y'all hear. I will go on record as saying you were a part of the reason why that show became a hit. Because you were the only person <laughs> to me, but besides Kenya, I would say besides Kenya. How? The show was a number one hit season one. Cynthia and Peter were just add-ons. We wanted to see Nene and Kim fight, and Sheree be broke. That's it. Carlos, you you know, Carlos, he butters them up and then he gets them to expose all their business. And this was no different. Kenya, you are not afraid of Nini. So knowing that, obviously, husbands at that time were more background players, what made you stand out and go toe to toe with one of the queen bees of reality television? Well, I mean, we was on the show and, you know, like she, you know, again, you know, Nini is six foot tall, flat footed. Was that a read? <laughs> you get loud, you, you get loud. You're big and you get loud. Oh, no, 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 no. Did he just paraphrase Kim? He said six foot and flat footed and loud. You get loud, you, you get loud. You're big oh, and you, you get, get loud. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all caught that shade. That's light shade, because Nini is his homegirl, but he ain't lying. <laughs> I told you guys, okay, you guys really will have to watch the whole interview. You will have to watch the whole interview. It's on Carlos is King, uh, Peter, nor Carlos disappointed, but we about to shade him. You know what I'm saying? You know, when she put on heels, she, she told everybody when she put on heels, and, and she got a reckless mouth. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people just didn't even want to be in that to tape with her because they feel like they're never going to win that scene. You know, I couldn't wait to tape with her because she talked way too much shit. You know what I'm saying? I know Cynthia was kind of afraid of her, to be honest with you. You know, so I know if we're going to be on this show, you know, somebody got to take on Nini. I'm like, yo, I'll do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm apologizing to Nini. Because, backstory, y'all, when I watched the show, Nini was my favorite. I love Nini. I'm, I'm, I've told y'all time and time again, Toothless Nini was my favorite. 
But now we know that it was a concerted effort from Peter. That wasn't just something that he happened to do or felt. He knew what he was doing. So all that stuff that all the girls were telling us about him, it was true. I don't get it. It was, it was, it was absolutely true. Women, be a bitch. You stop trying to be a damn bitch. Those scenes were very much Peter and Nini going like this because Peter was stealing her camera time. And I don't blame her. The show was built around Nini. Cynthia was not even like a fixture at that point. And Peter decided to make her a fixture. That is what we saw. You saw this a couple times with Nini. You also saw it during Pillow, pillow Talk or Pillow Chat. Kenya was becoming too much of a threat. When you saw Nini go at Peter, be backstory, you don't watch the show. Uh, Kenya did this whole charity thing, and technically it probably was to get under Nini's skin, where Nini was like the guest of honor, but she didn't even know about it, didn't know that she was required to stand up in front of people and talk, and Nini got mad. During that scene, she was kind of like nasty, and it was a charity event, and I felt like Peter, like, well, oh, it's kind of whack to be up here receiving something for your charity whether you knew or not but now that i know peter's mindset now that he's admitted to his mindset he is in full patricia mode y'all let me see what y'all are saying <laughs> she wasn't homeless though who was homeless we had to he had to keep cynthia in the show okay so y'all are getting it Peter got a mouth on him. When Phaedra tried to shade him about being a baby daddy of 50, 11 kids, he came back at her, et cetera. She had a point and he had a point. Yeah, Patricia, y'all, Patricia did not hold back in this interview. We got like 700 people in here. Definitely hit that like button because we're about to we're about to clown. We are about to clown even more than normal. But <laughs> Like the guys was the guys were never significant. You know what I'm saying? The guys was just there, and I'm like, why they call the show the Atlanta Housewife if they don't really want to um, show the, the guys' personality? They're, they're making sense to me. And I believe I had a couple of conversation with you about it, and and you got what I was saying, and then you start going, you you went against the grain, and you start in, in, you know introducing the guys more and make the guys participate more, and that's when people actually got interested in the show because all they would see all the time is a bunch of women just doing this all the time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the, by the guys getting involved, it add different dynamics to it. You know what I'm saying? And, and Apollo and I. Yes, it added a different dynamic, but did you hear him taking credit for the show being popular after he told Carlos what to do? I can't show you guys the clip of Carlos and them, but I can tell you that Carlos was not pleased with Peter trying to take credit for what Carlos did as the executive producer. Well, now, the first time we met, we were going to fight because, you know, his wife was saying, I say some shit that some interview I did with Uptown Magazine and they asked me what I think about the girl. And I was just being honest, you know what I'm saying? And she was offended. Maybe because I didn't like her from day one. Never did. <laughs> you don't like Phaedra day one. Why is that? I, I, just, I think she, I think she's the kind of person to throw the rock and hide her hands. Allegedly, y'all are both scamming. So what's the difference? You... <laughs> Allegedly, y'all are two peas in a pod. Just saying. Uh... <laughs> I hear you. He don't need to see how to win the business, honey. Turn into old chick, honey. Girl, bye. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this chick is messy as hell because she would throw the rock out of her hands and then push Portia to go do her dirty work. You know what I'm saying? That shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter, you're about to make Black Twitter go crazy. And I love it. So, what, 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 you, what you're saying is so true in the sense of you and so I became the showrunner season six. I became the executive producer of the show season six. Mm -hmm. You and I had a conversation. And me and Todd Tucker had a conversation. And even Apollo, I think, at the time, we all said it's important that the men have a voice. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I named you three my greatest house husbands of all time is because, and I'm going to go on record saying this, and I don't care who I fan because I'm being honest, you made Cynthia interesting, Apollo made Phaedra interesting, and because of Todd Tucker, Candy's storyline became more interesting. We got a chance to see Mama Joyce at her glory because of Todd. And in my opinion, Todd being a part of Candy's world really made her storyline fascinating. I don't disagree with what Carlos is saying in terms of the husbands add something to it, but they should always just be the olive in a martini glass. 
they are a straw to a drink where you know you could take the straw out and still drink. That's what it should be. But that's not what Peter wants us to believe. Peter wants us to believe that he was the show. And technically, Cynthia was not even the show. Fascinating because Todd came in as a producer and you and Apollo really were so entertaining to watch that. I made the executive decision and I got in a lot of trouble for this. I made sure that you men take scenes together and that we did more couples events. You know what I'm saying? More men and women would watch the show together. Before, it's just a lot of women watching the show. And the ratings, we could clearly see how the ratings jump when, when the three of us got into it. You know what, I mean? what? Look, from season one, RHOA was the cash cow for Bravo. The ratings didn't just jump because Peter came in with some contrived storylines. Are y'all hearing this? Like... The show is about the housewives. Husbands are not central. They might be central in Jersey, but they're not central in Atlanta. He's rewriting history. Exactly. We got almost a thousand people in here, but we only have 200 likes. So definitely hit that like button because uh, we're not done with Patricia. Patricia got some explaining to do. Uh, <laughs> let's continue. You know what I'm saying? Got into the show and start, and you start showing the guys more. And that makes a lot of the girls upset too because they were taking camera time away from them. You know what I'm saying? That's why Nene told me to stay out, stay, stay out of woman business. Why? Women You stop trying to be a damn bitch. I hear you. Peter needs to stay out of women business, honey. Turn into old chick, honey. Girl, bye. <laughs> I don't get in woman business. Peter, say he got beef with Chip. Oh, what is what, the beef what's the beef? I don't have beef with men, so. Uh, don't that sound like he be getting in women business? Don't that sound like he be getting in women business? <laughs> Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you. Is it a coincidence? Y'all, I when you did you watch this interview? Were y'all freaking out as I was when I was watching this interview? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> what, huh? You then told all your business, Peter. You then called Cynthia boring, Nene big and loud. What are we doing? <laughs> uh, okay, so we do have like almost a thousand people in here. Let's see where we are in likes. Uh, we got like 300 likes, but we could be at five to 600. Anyway, but let's keep going. Why? Because I'm taking more camera time. <laughs> <laughs> Down with me, that's why. You know what I'm saying? I got some shit I want to promote too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, she didn't like that shit at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? It's called the Housewives of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And we are right. It's called the Housewives of Atlanta, not the House Husbands of Atlanta who are living off a housewife check. Earlier in the interview, he said that they added Cynthia onto the cast so they could get people who were really in the business world, people who were real celebrities. Okay, well that. And that Cynthia was still at the prime of her modeling career doing print work. Technically, low-key, she really was doing um, print work for those moo-moos that Phaedra's mama ordered from. Phaedra didn't lie. Cynthia was doing moo-moos, but that didn't mean she was at the prime of her career. She was just, in my opinion, struggling to work to make sure that she could pay to help Uptown Supper Club, his business. But we're going to get into Cynthia in a minute because he was shading her as if he didn't need her when we know that they were broke at the beginning of the show. Let me see if I can find Cynthia's Moomoo. Cynthia Bailey Moomoo. How do you spell Moomoo? Is it? I don't know how to spell Moomoo, but hopefully we'll find it. Cynthia Bailey modeling fashion. Let's see. Oh, okay, I found it. Okay, so yeah, technically, let me show you guys. 
when Cynthia started on RHOA, this was like her modeling gigs. When when Phaedra gave her that read, she was low key. You know, it is what it is. You got to work. You got to pay the bills. You got to pay in allegedly Peter's bills. Oh, okay. So y'all know how to spell it. I thought it was M O O M O O. I think no. This was a this was a moo moo. <laughs> well, let's continue. relevant and you know like you know with just you giving me an, uh, just like a little push i ran with it you know what i'm saying it's like every time i need to open her mouth and see some reckless shit you know you guys have, and you know like you know with just you giving me an uh, just like a little push i ran with it you know what i'm saying it's like every time i need to open her mouth and see some reckless shit you know you guys have us all wired up you know what i'm saying so you can so he's basically giving you the behind the scenes at the time what he would do carlos would tell him go get nini and he would go sick nini nini was right I cannot, I cannot, Mims, all, Mims, all of the housewives give their husband 10 to 15% of the check. Do your research. No, they don't. Peter got 15% of the check. The housewives cut checks however they want to. And I guarantee you, Lisa Vanderpump and getting, and giving Ken a cut. No, it's the house husbands who are, in need of money who might get a cut for clowning on screen i do my research renee <laughs> um let's get back to patricia you can hear our mumbling in the background like yo go, yo take the camera to beat him ask him how we feel about what just happened and i couldn't wait to tell y'all motherfuckers how i feel <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they hated me for that shit. but it was some real shit. It makes people really want to watch the show Not again my apologies to Nini because I really low key felt like when Peter addressed her, Peter was in the right. But now knowing the mindset and to know that that part was produced and he was trying to get camera time, I'm gonna go have to side with Nini's. I'm gonna have to side with. Um, I hear you. Peter need to stay out of winning business, honey. Turn into old chick, honey. Girl, bye. Great. I did enjoy seeing the men on the show, but what we're talking about here, Char, is the mindset. It's the mindset of he knew what he was doing to get camera time and to keep Cynthia on the show. And, you know, Nini was right. Nini was right. I'm still not siding with Bullwinkle. Look, I'm not saying that Nini was right in what she did. I'm just saying Peter addressing her instead of it being one of the girls was Peter trying to steal camera time. And now he then all but admitted it. You get loud. You, you loud. get loud. You're bad. You get, get loud. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, are y'all uh, put it in the chat. And if you're replay gang, you definitely let me know in the comments. But are you guys kind of seeing what I'm saying? Peter is exposing himself here. He thinks he's just being funny, but now you're letting us know that you had put on and you was all in the women bit. I want to sit there and have a go back and forth with Peter. You know how he talk about women stuff all the time. The girls were letting us know the entire time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so let me take this off and continue. No, and what's and what's interesting too, Peter, behind the scenes, what people don't know is Cynthia used to be mad at you. Yeah. For 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 what she felt like you were taking away scenes from her and making the scenes about you and interfering in her relationship with Nini. Yeah. I thought that was the dumbest shit ever. Because I think the whole the whole purpose why we was on the shit is because of the money that they was paying her and the exposure that we were getting as a couple. So the more we tape, either myself or her, because they never was going to take me by myself. It's always in our house with her there, and her and I talking about it. But like when the cameras are gone, she felt the wrath of what was coming next from the girls. Like, you know, especially Nina. Her and Nina, I used to wake up every morning there on the phone. I used to go to bed every night on there on the phone. I'm like, yo, why, why are you talking to the enemy? You know what I'm saying? You know, why are you talking to the enemy? She's going she's gonna, to like talk to you out of whatever we're doing. She, I think Nina used to probably used to talk to uh, Cynthia that much to tell her to check me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So it was a scam that... Peter had set up from the very beginning of her starting. But let's get a little bit more into Cynthia. Let's get more into Cynthia. 
Y'all, again, check out this whole interview. It was actually really, really good because I don't know if maybe Peter had a drink or two, but he had loose lips this whole interview. And we haven't even gotten to him incriminating himself yet. To the door, and I'm like, oh, shit, this could be big. You know what I'm saying? I got it. And a lot of them didn't get it. I don't think my, my ex-wife got it at the time. You know, and, you know, every year these girls, nobody, they don't have no guaranteed con contract that they're coming back for every year. They would sit around and wait to see if they get that, that email. You know what I'm saying? And since you used to sit around like, you know, like, am I going to get called back? You know, because year after year, you just, your money go from a quarter million to a half a million to 750000 to a million, and it just keep on come, going up if you keep on coming back. And I used to laugh watching it damn near by the name. Now, that is some tea, because I did hear that by the time Cynthia ended, I think she was at 1.5 or 1.6 million, and she had a, like, 12 or 13-year arc on the show. So now he's telling us how much she made. He also told how much Nia Long, who he used to date, was making. I think he said Nia Long, back when they dated, was making $800,000 per project. I wouldn't feel comfortable with Peter knowing how much money I make with all of the allegations of him being a scammer. You know exactly how much Cynthia makes. You know exactly... Mm-mm. And then she's coming back. I said, yo, there's nobody like me and you in the show. We're coming back. Stop, stop stressing. You know what I'm saying? And it, it worked. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, even when I got my divorce with her, I tell her I want nothing. So I, I kind of leave $5 million on the table. So <laughs> she should be enjoying that shit because I took nothing. Which actually, she had to sue you $475,000. So she's supposed to praise you because she did not, you guys did not split whatever assets she had. And that's another thing. If you are such a prominent business person and entrepreneur and all these things, you saying you didn't take five million? That would have been her net worth, her money that she earned. If it was equal footing and you had five million, it would have been, if there would have been no equitable divide, right? Are y'all getting that? He's over here saying he could have took her money, which means he's saying he didn't have the same kind of money as Cynthia. Would she pay you to appear on the show sometimes, like to take scenes? No, no, well, you know, like. You know, everybody, they have their they, they glam squad and they, you know, they, they uh, you know, they stylist, they hair and makeup people, you know, and, you know, I, I used to take 15%. Whatever, whenever the check comes in, I would take 15% because I had to keep my shit up also. And, you know, the why would you be taking 15% of this woman's money? The time that I was giving to you guys was actually taking away time for my business. So I what business? Uptown Supper Clothes, Uptown Supper Club closed, I think their second season on the show, right? That's when they couldn't even afford to get the money for the liquor at their wedding. So they had to borrow or the mom had to give $2,000, which a wedding in that size meant that your guests were drinking boxed wine and eating like hot dogs and whatever else comes with the low budget wedding. But you were saying to Cynthia, I can't work. Meanwhile, in my opinion, Cynthia's money was feeding you and probably the money he used to create bar one the first one because the second one was with cordell's money cordelia what they call him <laughs> but he really thinks he's saying something with this like the ego on this man so our agreement was that i would take 15 percent after we pay all our household bills all right, Peter. You <laughs> so she was paying all the bills in the house and then paying Peter a salary of 15% of which he used to create businesses that failed. Make I can't make it make sense. I I can't. Notice that he said he would take 15. That does not sound like all the housewives give their husbands anything. Yeah, no, it definitely is not something that happens. And mostly, here's the thing. And I always have this problem with the housewives. Why do we not have wealthy, wealthy people? That's what I want to see. I don't want to see anybody waiting for a PP loan. I'm so, I don't. I, I don't like this fake it till you make it. Jersey, Atlanta, pretty much the only one who I would think has a lot that do not have to fake it till they make it is Beverly Hills. But they still have Dorit. So... I, I just want to see affluent people doing silly things like Kathy Hilton. That's what I want to see. Peter actively acting a fool on Housewives of Atlanta to keep boring Cynthia on the show so that she could pay all the bills and set his businesses up to fail. And then he not, after they get a divorce, pay this woman back 
her 170,000, she had to take him to court. And we're going to get into that because he gave Apollo some money. That's what I'm telling you guys. That's why I did this one live. Literally. <laughs> you deserve every penny because you are fantastic. And the beauty of that season is, those seasons, I should say, is the relationship that you formed with Greg Leagues. Yeah. And obviously, Greg is no longer with us. And you and I obviously have personal conversations about his last days. Um, can you share with the audience about what, what those last moments you had with Greg? And is it true that you were with Greg when he had his last breath? No, that's not. Now, y'all, I had to, I called a friend about this because we're about to get into something that is extremely real. And I had to call a friend because I did not like the tone of this part of the conversation. But, you know, different people have different opinions. So I'm, this is also why I'm doing this one live so that you guys let me know your actual opinion. We got about 1,500 people in here. We got only 500 likes. So we should be at almost 1,000 likes. We got 1,500 people in here. So definitely hit that like button. But let's continue going because this part gets deep. But I, it, it sounds real flippant to me. That's not true. Okay. Um, Nini called me and let me know that it's not going to be here long. All right. And he was asking uh, to see me. And I flew from Miami to Atlanta. And... When I went into the house and they walked me into his bedroom where he was on the bed. Um, Cause I seen him like, I'd seen him like four or five months before he was at my venue in South beach. You know what I'm saying? And he looked great. So I didn't know it took a turn. So you did not know he took a turn because you knew your friend had cancer, but you never called after he showed up at your venue. Now, technically Nini and Greg at your venue presents a photo op for Peter, which is good for his business. So after that point, why weren't you checking on your friend? This was five months later. What is happening? We're listening to um, Carlos King. We're listening to a few snippets of Carlos King and Peter Patricia Thomas's interview together where Peter was exposing everybody's business all but his own on this interview. I want to hear about his business prowess after we now know that all these scamming allegations are running amok in the palace. That's what I want to know. Again, yes, Carlos booked him, but <laughs> Peter thought he was filming cocktails with queens. That was the problem. I solved that mystery very early on. Mm. Let me take this off because this is a serious part. You know, like four or five, six months later, when I went and see him on the bed, the guy, the guy was like 90 pounds. And everybody knew he was standing 300 at, at all times that I knew him. And he didn't even look the same. Like, he just looked he looked different. I thought I was looking at a little East Indian man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I walked in, I'm like, man, damn, who's that? His hair was straight, like he's straight out of East Indian, like Bangladesh. That's how he looked laying on the bed. And I didn't find that funny or amusing. And to my knowledge, I've never known anybody to actually give full details about Greg, his appearance right before he passed. I've never even heard Nini really expose a lot of stuff about Greg's last few days. And I just did not like how flippant he was with this conversation. It goes on. And while I was there, they actually thought he was dying that day. And I dragged Apollo to come with me. You know what I'm saying? So we, both of us went in the room and he held in my hand. You dragged Apollo to come with you. Couldn't he have just said, and Apollo came with me? And then he actually held my hand for around 45 minutes. And the whole time I'm like, oh my God, I hope you just don't, I hope you don't take this lap right holding my hands. That would fuck with me for my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm there with him and, you know, they said, Greg Peter is here. Uh, and he kind of looked over at me because he couldn't really move. His, his muscles, they weren't really working. Uh, and he's like, he smiled and said, you know, one of his friends bust out crying, oh my God, he's having Peter is here. He really gets the fuck out of the room. <laughs> and so I was there with him and I was just there and Nini was there the whole time rubbing his feet, you know what I'm saying? Because he liked the way it feels. He, uh, in his bedroom, the, the blinds was there so they couldn't close the blinds because a lot of times he's looking outside because he's seen real life outside. So this part of the interview, I didn't really... It felt personal, and I felt like this would be something that Nini would talk about if she wanted to. I, I will say this. Anytime you have an, a life experience like that, it is really your right to talk about it. But I just think that there are certain things that you do and don't do, and this did not feel right, how he looked, the setup, dragging Apollo. Eh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. 
Uh, Bad Biscuit says, love, love, love your analysis. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Bad Biscuit. Um, it just felt, it felt ego driven and not, I'm talking about my friend who I really cared about past. Remember, he didn't even know that Greg took a turn because he wasn't actively calling to check on him. Like he's exposing himself without even knowing. It's just flipping for him. Yeah, he was fine when he came to my restaurant, but next thing I know, Nini calls me and I have to fly in. Why? Like, you know, your friend is like terminal. Outside, you know what I'm saying? That's when you know somebody's definitely not going to be here. So after uh, an hour of us being in the room, you know, like. I'm going to I'm going to move on. But replay gang, definitely let me know in the comments. I could be wrong. You know, I talked to a friend of mine today and she was like, you know, different people experience death differently. And, you know, that just might be the way that it came across. Patty is coming from Marlo's Peach. <laughs> Marlo, uh, Mia, Wendy. Because remember, if y'all are just getting here, Peter was very, very clear. Peter does not play when it comes to the housewives. He does not get in women's business. I don't get in women's business. Peter, they, he got beef with Chip. Oh, what is what, the what's the beef? I don't have beef with men, so sit there and have a go back and forth with peter you know how he talk about women's stuff all the time <laughs> y'all know he don't get in women's business we got about 1700 people in the chat let's see we should have at least a thousand likes and we only have 600 likes definitely hit the like button if you're new to the channel subscribe we have a good time over here uh, and yes i do come with the receipts <laughs> She meant to say, do I need to bring the receipts, Patricia? Because I got receipts. That's what she meant to say. <laughs> exactly. He does get into women's business. <laughs> He's always in their business. Not Peter is Satan. <laughs> This is the old video from. <laughs> okay. It says he made Greg's illness about him and Peter has no business. They are all foreclosed. Now, somebody said that his business in Miami is still up and running, even though the allegations are that they don't have a liquor license and he's having that woman go. And he was having allegedly his manager go every day to a regular liquor store to pick up liquor. It's crazy. I did a whole review of that. Tasha K did a whole expose. You can check out those videos. Thank you so much, Ms. PBD, for the super chat. Uh, LaShonda Davis, yes. Thank you so much for the super chat. I, I really do appreciate you guys coming and spending time with my foolish behind. Uh, and thank you for the super chats. I never expect them, but they're great to get them. And the only thing I ask for is something free, which is a like. That's it. And we still are, we're still at only 700 likes. We got 1,750 people. Anyway, let's get back to the video. You know, uh, they keep people keep on saying different things to him, and he was he was trying to say something. You know, when I left there, I'm like, I'm never going back. Actually, you know, like Yanni is a very stylish guy. He's very. He was my friend. He's talking about maybe he did twice. Not, I don't want to do this whole video because I want you guys to go and check out Carl King's actual video. But he said that he didn't introduce Nini to her married boyfriend. He knew the wife and he knew the man. Nini had already met the man. And just asked him, and Peter gave him the seal of approval, which is kind of weird because he was married. So you're going to tell your friend Nini, and the allegations are that Greg had given his permission to for Nini to date. So the allegations are that Nini had met and started dating him, and he was helping her through the end. Those are the allegations. So for Peter to know that this man was married, wouldn't you be giving her the heads up like, you know, this ain't too kosher or this could come back to bite you in the ass? Because there is a lawsuit pending. So, you know, he did say Yoni's wife was a queen. So he's given all this information, but why you didn't give it to Nini? Like, girl, get it together. Connect the dots. Why didn't you give it to Nini? Okay, so let's, let's continue. Because... This was a pretty good interview. Oh, do you want to live? You know what I'm saying? That guy is full of life. 
you know, to be seeing these things on the blog and reading these things. Paula went to jail. The things sort of transpire between, you know, Candy Phaedra that obviously affected the husbands. Yeah. So word on the street is that you, Apollo, and Todd almost got into a fight at an Atlanta nightclub. Is that true? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about uh, Apollo and uh, Todd. But I remember I was at a club called Whiskey Mistress in Buckhead. Now, this ain't new for Peter, because if y'all remember, there was a whole video that surfaced of Peter fighting Kenya's ex-boyfriend, the crazy one with the crazy eye. You know, he had one eye that was bigger than the other. The one who spray painted her uh, security cameras, that guy. Peter pulled a knife on that guy during a brawl that they had in a radio station. So Peter's not new to fighting. And Todd, you know, Apollo just came home. You know, when he went to jail. He was in jail for six years. Okay, we were still doing the show. So when he came home, like, of, of course, I could only imagine him being in jail. People recognize him from the show. And, and every day probably was, you know, getting some kind of fellow inmates, you know. So when he come home, uh, it's like time started again for him on the outside. So the only thing that he remembers is what happened before you went in, you know, and what happens before and when the feds come looking for um, all the stuff that he apparently bought with stolen money. Uh, you know, at my house, some of the stuff that was at. Now, y'all listen very closely. Listen very closely. Patricia's about to incriminate himself. Out the Candy House, and you know, like when they came looking for it, I heard that they were looking, so I took the shit out of my house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I put it somewhere else. So when they come looking for it, it wasn't there. I think when they went to Candy House and Todd House, it was there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, y'all. So we're about to go deep. If you're new to the channel, we take deep dives over here and you can't get nothing past the straight shooters. So a straight shooter. Pow, pow. <laughs> and what this man just said, and I actually, I'm going to play it again. Like when they came looking for it, uh, you know, at my house, some of the stuff that was at Todd and Candy house. And, you know, like, when they came looking for it, I heard that they were looking. So I took the shit out of my house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I put it somewhere else. So when they come looking for it, it wasn't there. I think when they went to Candy House and Todd House, it was there. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a street dude. So <laughs> he lost all the shit that they had. The shit that I was my house, I gave his people pick it up and they did what they, you know, did what, and he had money. They sold it and he had money from that. Shit that he probably had over there. They, the defense picked it up and he couldn't sell shit. So it was kind of bitter beyond that. You know what I'm saying? So okay. when he came up, you just incriminated yourself. You knew the feds were looking, allegedly, you knew the feds were looking for Apollo's stolen merchandise because I think they said he had a car that he stashed at their house. So you gave it to Apollo's illegitimate, crooked, criminal people, and then they sold it. Are y'all getting that? You want to, I don't know... Like an interview with Carlos King could definitely help his his um failing businesses, but at what point? Like, do you what what is this, Peter? You then just told on yourself. Now I want you guys to see this because I found this clip, and you can see in the clip where let me see is it is it, okay? You can see in this clip where Cynthia was about to say too much, and Peter stopped her. Let's watch. Receive some information that you guys may have some stolen property in here. Yeah, her first thought is like, what did Peter did now? <laughs> but right, besides, I can't even think about Peter when but besides that, uh, when I went downstairs and talked to him, he, he, he basically... He cut her off. Not only did he cut her off, he also tapped her shoulder and took over the conversation. So she was about to say something else, and he knew that he had done some sneaky criminal type shit. And that's why he tapped her on the shoulder. It puts everything into context. Now that we know that he purposely gave it to the illegitimate people so that it could get sold and processed. Now, do y'all think he got a cut? Receive some information that you guys may have some stolen property in here. Yeah, her first thought is like, what did Peter did now? <laughs> but right, besides, I can't even think about Peter when but besides that, the uh, when I went that's downstairs and talked to him, he, he, he basically... Look at... Phaedra. Now, Phaedra may not win any cases, but Phaedra knows a crook when she sees one. So that little head tilt, I bet you at that point, Phaedra knew something was up. Because Phaedra knows, you know, it takes one to know one. We'll do one more time. It's so many little subtle things. That's what the straight shooters do. We don't let you get away with nothing. <laughs> Receive some information that you guys may have some stolen property in here. Yeah, her first thought is like, 
Well, did Peter did now. <laughs> but right, besides, I think about Peter but he besides came that, uh, when I went downstairs and talked to him, he, he, he basically. Like what? She's looking for cues and body language. I'm telling y'all. Uh, so we got almost 2,000 people in here. We definitely should be at at least 1,000 likes. Your boy's working today. We're not even at 900 likes. Let's get the like goal up to 1,200. And if you are new here, definitely subscribe because this is what we do. We solve mysteries around here. Came out, you, you, that's where you left off and that's where you began. And I was trying to uh, uh, explain to Todd that, you know, listen, that's where you left off. And he's only speaking from his perspective. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no reason to have no beef with either one of them, but I understand the mentality of where he left off and where he began. You know what I'm saying? And when Todd seen me, like, he kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck? What's that about? You know what I'm saying? So, like, I went up to talk to him and people was kind of, like, gathering around, like, but none of that didn't matter. I tell him, yo, I don't know to talk to him, but he was talking to anybody. He was in jail for them, the same kind of crime. Twice. He spent 12 years, 10, 11 to 12 years in jail for them, the same kind of crime. So I'm saying, dude, if, you, if you're coming home and you want to be a part of your, your kid's life and you want to show Phaedra that you have changed, you know what I'm saying? Because she, she's just not going to let you be around him and, you, and you're in some criminal shit and you're going to go back in. You know what I'm saying? What do you want it to do? Yo, you want it to refab a house, you want it to do a house? You know, I took a couple of hundred thousand and put it in his hand and tell him run with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go do your thing. Okay, let's stop right there. You owe Cynthia, your ex. So Apollo got out in 2019. You owe Cynthia $175,000 that she had to take you to court for, but you have enough money to just put a couple hundred thousand in Apollo's hand, the career criminal. What a, wait, what? I could see if he said, you know, I set him up in an apartment. Mind you, Apollo has a whole wife outside. So somebody was putting money in his books and it was probably his wife. So after he gets out, how do you have $200,000 to set him up when the allegations are you aren't even paying your employees? And I'm not talking about uh, Portia saying, go up to any 19-year-old girl in Atlanta and ask him how they get paid for Peter. And it's full of penis. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about his actual employees coming forward and saying that he keeps them not paid for three weeks in the hole. That's what the allegations are. But you can give Apollo a couple hundred thousand and tell him to run with it? What is that? Because I don't understand. We, If you're just getting here, Peter and already admitted that Cynthia paid the bills, gave him a 15% salary from her salary, and now you got money to give Apollo two hundred or a couple hundred thousand. Oh, so y'all don't even believe in it. <laughs> Patrice. <laughs> Not Patrice is full of BS. Look, I, you know, it is what it is. Carol Chamberlain, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, you really do deep dives, ma'ams. I love it. Thank you. I, you know your boy be working for y'all. <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Mims, you are crazy. I've been watching you for a while. I love you. Thank you. I love you guys, too. That's why I had to bring you this, especially when I saw that little tap that Patricia had gave, that Patricia had gave Cynthia. That tap said everything that I needed to hear. That tap was like, don't get us, don't get us caught up. Don't get us. <laughs> you know, um, uh, don't go back down the same path, you know, find happiness, doing something that's not going to put your ass in jail, basically, you know, uh, and, I don't, I don't think he was getting that from anybody else. So when he was, another thing he was saying when he was locked away, Todd said he was going to have him, but I don't think it really happened that way for five years. But anytime he called me and he asked me for, for commissary money or to send this money to this person or that money to this person, you know, I know he doesn't have it. And I know he's, he's still trying to be a man. You understand? Where was his, where was his wife? You then got with somebody in jail. You were planning. I think his wife was on one of those reality shows where she was like planning the wedding that didn't even happen till I think last year. This was like years and years ago. Why are you reaching out to Peter to put money in your books? Unless maybe he did get a cut of the car of that sale of that car. I don't know, but that's not what it was. You understand what I'm saying? So I did it for him, you know. And and when he came out, it was respect because I didn't thought you were going to be the one. I thought Todd was going to be the one. So probably that's where the beef stemmed from, you know. But so when y'all when y'all all saw each other, it was you, Todd, and Apollo together. 
Uh, I, I can't. I think Apollo was in, in the joint that night, but I, I didn't like the way Tyler was coming at me because I personally didn't do nothing. But you know, you know, we're New Yorkers, so he's rolling with all this dude from the Bronx and whoever he was rolling with, and he feel like I was rolling with Apollo, so he didn't have nothing for me. And 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 words was exchanged and grew up in each other's face. And, and, Y'all were up in each other's faces. Yeah, definitely in the club. Definitely where people have to separate us. You know what I'm saying? Because we both men. You know what I'm saying? We're not. Neither one of us was backing down. You know, uh, I was ready to go. Whatever. You know. How is your relationship dude, like now with him? I saw I saw Todd in 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 Vegas. So y'all, again, definitely you you definitely should be checking out the actual interview that Carlos did with Peter. But again, I had to apologize to Nini because I really really gave Nini a hard time. I gave Nini a hard time about that whole scene of her being at the charity and Peter going off and then Greg pushing Peter. But the the mindset. Even Greg was trying to tell us like these they were breaking the fourth wall and we didn't even see it. Y'all remember this? I had the situation. You took it from me. I'm already dealing with the situation and you take it. How did we not see this? This was less about Greg. I mean, Peter confronting Nene and more about them all seeing that Patricia was you know crazy to call somebody's husband a bitch but we are talking about peter you stop trying to be a damn bitch peter need to stay out of winning business honey turn into old chick honey girl bye not not i mean not kenya patting her hair but greg was trying to tell us let me film these scenes with my wife. And Greg literally was the voice of reason. If you are if you are a Bravo fan, when Greg pushed Peter, that was really the only time that we saw him get out of character other than when him and Nene were divorcing and he had gone on that radio station and spilled the tea that he had invested all his $200,000 to set Nene up. And Nene was like, where did the money go? But in all honesty, you know, I'm not one to gossip, so you ain't heard this from me. But that whole house that they were living in season one wasn't actually their house. Greg had actually finagled some business deal with somebody to let them live in the house. However, they did not know that the house would be featured on RHOA. And then they got kicked out and evicted right after the end of season one. And to add insult to industry, somebody tipped off the news. So the local Atlanta news was there watching Nene get evicted on season one. That's a blast from the past. But I'm not one to gossip. So you ain't heard that from me. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Miss PBD. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, Q, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, Patricia is a con artist in my Nini voice. Do an interview. <laughs> Do an interview with Carlisa the babysitter. <laughs> thank you, Q, for the super chat. Q will not let Carlos King live. <laughs> I don't, I do not tell y'all on this channel what to say and what not to say. That's, you know, Pamela, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, nice work, Detective Mims. The gray faux hawk is killing me. Is this one the faux hawk? Is it this one? <laughs> uh, Nini didn't lie. I know I had to apologize to Nini for that season. Now I still, you know, I still... Don't let Nene get away with nothing. But I, I apologize because she was on point with the whole you acting like a bitch. Beatrice, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, lock trick butt up. <laughs> no statute of limitations in Georgia. Oh, there isn't? I didn't know that. So he might have just given himself a one-way ticket to jail by saying that he gave away the stolen property. Dang. Thank you, Beatrice. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> okay, y'all. So, what I talked to a friend of mine before I did this video, and she said, you know, if you take any one of these things that Peter was doing, then it may not sound so bad. But taking credit for what Cynthia did, making sure that you stole the scenes from the women, um, taking fifteen percent of her money. And making him pay the bill and making her pay the bills, the household bills, having her invest, not paying her back, giving Apollo two hundred thousand dollars. That's a whole lot, Peter. That's that's a whole lot. I can't make that make sense, y'all. But what I can do is play my intro 
ask you guys to like the video and let you guys know that I appreciate you being here. Uh, we hit a we get we're almost at like 2,000 viewers, but we only got a thousand. So I'm gonna play this intro while this is playing. This will give you a reason to like the video to let YouTube know that we are here and we are clowning Peter Thomas today. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I want to make it make one. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. I remember Candy how you look like this. No, no, stop. <laughs> I fly above. I, I, I fly above. I, I fly. No, that what you. No, I fly above. I, <laughs> all right y'all have a great day i'm gonna see you guys later remember you can check out that whole interview on carlos kings there was more juicy tidbits almost enough for me to be up do a part two but maybe i'll add that to something else later i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow have a good night and subscribe if you are not subscribed we have a good time